it on sec. Okay. Okay. Tarot Documentary presents Filming in Thailand, a podcast for movie lovers with exclusive stories from behind the scenes. Rolling sound. Sound rolling. And action. And here we are with our guest Vitaya Pantingyam, also known as Kun Pu. Certainly the most international of all Thai actors. Welcome to Filming in Thailand and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Stefan. Nice to be here. So, Kun Pu, are you filming in Thailand? I am always, not, not always lately, but yes, I'm filming in Thailand and of course uh, many places, you know, whenever they call me, I'm there. What, what were the last places you, you visited for you? Um, last Thank year was a, a lovely project in, uh, in Europe. That was lovely. And I think because I'm here, um, sometimes the project, uh, they're looking for somebody from Thailand and I have an opportunity to, to, uh, to be a part of those projects. In Thailand also? So I, in Thailand, both Thailand and international. So you have been, uh, managing a, a ballet school, a dance school, uh, producing ballet, uh, ballet shows for 20 years. Uh, and then one day, what happened? One day I was just uh, enjoying drinking beer with my friend in a, in a club. I know your friend. <laughs> your friend is a famous uh, um, cinematographer. Yeah, who uh, actually I was with another friend. At that time, I didn't, I didn't know him. Okay. Uh, yet, but uh, yes, uh, Wayne Muller, who's a DP, uh, at that time he was uh, looking for an actor to be in his short film, and then uh, he approached me and said, "Would would you like to be in my uh, short film?" What was in the name of the, the short film? Second Chance. Second Chance. How but, appropriate, right? But that was her first chance. That was actually, oh, I would say, second chance because my first chance was that. I was running a, a, you know, a successful ballet school for the past 20 years, you know, and we still have the school, uh, you know, always behind the scene, always producing ballet, involved with production, you know, ordering food for people, things like that. But then the opportunity came and I said to wait, I would like to try. Could you imagine at that time that you would have this international career? Never, never have, would have thought. Um, uh, until I, the phone rang. Until the phone rang. Until the phone. We'll come back to the the phone ringing a bit later. So you you start acting and this new career at the moment of of your life when I would say normal people they start to plan their retirement and stop kind of stop working. Yeah. Are you always doing things upside down? <laughs> I think it's you know what happened happened. Um, at that time I was fifty. 50 years old, I was, like I said, I was very happy with my business. But there was something else. I, you know, even my wife said, hey, you know, would you like to try different things? You know, maybe become a chef, you know, or become a, a bakery chef. Because you cook very well. <laughs> I always enjoy uh, cooking. But at that time, I was also looking for something. But I wasn't sure what, what it would be. You know, I had a background in fine arts. So I thought maybe start painting again, you know, doing some kind of watercolor or thing like that. Things that, things that associate with arts, you know, because I always feel like I'm a, I'm an artist. I need to create something. You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary with your host, Stefan Lambert. I like quotes. In this show, we like to quote uh, uh, people from the industry, directors, actors, and I have this quote I, I'd like to to run by you. It's from Akira Kurosawa, this Japanese director, who, who said, who probably said, we, you know, we never know if the quote is real or not, but let's, <laughs> let's say it's real. It's from internet, so it must be real. <laughs> yeah, right. So Akira Kurosawa has probably said somewhere that actors are one family over the entire world. So do you feel like today that you belong to this international family of actors? I would believe so. For my experience, uh, now I've been around for 14 years in the industry and many things keep 
surprising me. You know, even last week when I was in New York, you know, I I was I was attending the uh, the New York uh, International Asian International Film Festival, and when I arrived at the theater, there were people waiting, and people who have seen my project ten years ago, and they still, you know, feel like you know really enjoy my performance, and I feel like I'm become not just an actor, but I become then a member of the community. Your fans were waiting for you there. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. With the poster pictures. And I was so surprised. I was touched by by their, you know, by what they, the enthusiastic yes. seeing. That's that's fantastic. And do do you believe, I mean, or do you feel like uh, an ambassador of, 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 of Thailand arts when you travel like that and people come to you? <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a, Uh, just a small piece of, of Thailand that want to show it to the world, I believe. You know, when people think of Thailand, they always think of the, the food, the beautiful, uh, you know, uh, tourist destinations. And when I, I believe if they think of Thai actors that work in the international uh, movie production, you know, there, there are many, a uh, few names, you know, Very of course. Cool. Uh, Tony Cha was one of them, and many people said that you know I became uh, some kind of symbolic or part of that you know so recognition. So I feel I feel I feel very honored. We we can say that there is no large budget films sh shot in Thailand without you. The, you you're everywhere. Well, like like I said, this is I'm very fortunate and uh, I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Why do you think? Uh, you are the, this 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 man that that people call and say, "Hey, uh, I'm shooting uh, um, the Hangover. I'm shooting uh, uh, the Last Execution. I'm shooting uh, the Cave Rescue. I'm, I mean, Thirteen Lives. We, we need you. Well, why do you think you in particular? You know, I think in in many career, not just acting. You know, when you started, you 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 have to know what you're building, and as for me. Of course, it's, I started by accident. You know, I start by, you know, doing a short film, and then that short film somehow grabbed the up, you know, grabbed the attention of the director. And they, I think it has to do with your own personal, I said, personal uniqueness <laughs> or something that people were looking for. That they said, this is it. This is the guy. But then when you did something. Like as for me, I try to make things different. You know, like I said, I I was an artist. I'm still an artist. When I do something, I want to create my own style. And I think maybe because of my style, the way I perform, grab the attentions of the directors or the producer or people who are looking for the characters that will fit, you know, their character in their project. <laughs> As you mentioned, you you are running a dance school with your wife. You are. Uh, I know that you're a cook, even if it's not a professional occupation. You are, you cook very well, um, and you are uh, a martial art. Uh, say martial art artist. It doesn't sound very good, but you are you are a martial art specialist. You are a master of kendo, mm. so it, people can look up uh, what kendo is. But uh, it's. Uh, These activities help you to build up your your character, your persona that you're using in your new films. As I mentioned to you, I started at 50. so I would say half or more than half of my life I did something before I became an actor. I, of course, uh, when you mention about cooking, I always enjoyed cooking because I think cooking is also gave me a, a good foundation of being an, an actor. I always compare cooking to act. Acting, okay, or not because I think, you know, you need to know what dish you're making, how, how it would come out, and what kind of preparation you need to go through to come out with a delicious dish that plays. But when we look at uh, the the movies you've been, uh, uh, you know, acting, starring in, uh, you're not really a vegetarian. Huh? You you have a lot of blood <laughs> and meat around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was in New York, um, I joined a Hindu club, you know, in New York, and I. I never really got into fighting, sport, or that stuff before, but I really enjoy kendo as a martial art. It's a Japanese fencing, and I 
I didn't think much about it. At that time, I thought, you know, Kendo outfit is so cool. Uh, I would have fun with it. And I didn't realize it's, you know, as I'm practicing it, it's getting harder and harder and harder. You know, things should get easier as you are doing it. But after 30 some years of doing Kendo, I achieved the fifth degree black belt in Kendo. And I started an organization here. I was a co founder of Thailand Kendo Club. We form a national team. We compete in, you know, uh, many international uh, competition. Part of learning about martial arts, I think in, in, I think in any sport, is about uh, discipline, it's about, you know, respect, it's mm-hmm. about understand the philosophy of the sport that you're doing. And for me, 30-some years of kendo, I can apply that into my new career. Uh, one of the films that uh, I think the director knew that I was doing kendo, and he changed the whole weapon of the movie to sword. So and that movie also uh, became one of the movies that changed my life. So that's br- that brings me to, to my next question. Do you believe in God only forgives? I believe that only wife forgives. That's <laughs> <laughs> only wife forgives. If you're she lucky, will, if she will forgive. <laughs> So you were you you start to mention about this this uh, movie that was your your, no. your big very breakthrough. Only God forgives. Only God forgives. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, so <laughs> I guess you are the only actors in Thailand that had uh, beaten up uh, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> yeah, I know. If How Ryan feel if Ryan wanna beat me, he probably can do it in three minutes. But uh, he was, uh, you know, it's a big step. I have to say that even before that, of course, all the project that kind of built me up for that part. I have to really, uh, I feel grateful for, you know, the My Funness and Murder. I feel grateful for all the projects I did before. And then thing, when things ready, Only God Forgive came. And yes, it was a movie that uh, basically gave me an opportunity to to learn, to experience the uh, thing that, you know, kind of moved me to another chapter. You know, the fact that It was selected for Cannes International. I was there, and there seems like every cameraman, uh, camera, you know, saw me and said, "Hey, who is this guy from Thailand?" And that was like, you know, the big opportunity for me to to be seen. Kind of a breakthrough. Yeah, it's a break. It's a breakthrough. I was guest for the Thai Tourist Authority, the Tour- Tourist Authority of Thailand, a few months ago, and you know, of course, talking on the topic of filming in Thailand. <clears throat> and then I was just sitting and counting how many directors from how many nationalities have I already worked with. And it came up to 18 nationalities. So let's get, can, do you remember this list? Can can <laughs> we, can you list them with us now? Uh, yeah, like could, upside down, it's okay, but I could be uh, Danish, Hungarian, French, uh, American, uh, Japanese, Chinese, uh, Mongolian, um, Um, you know, uh, we call Swedish, right? Um, Malaysian, Indonesia, uh, uh, Malaysian, Philippines. Um, I I could come up more. I can't. Yeah. You know, uh, Engl- Engl- England. You know, you know. If I go to my IMDb, I think I could probably just. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to help you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so you're, you're really international, but that's that's amazing. Well, I think because you know, like. The topic, or you know, the, the name of, the, of this program is that family in Thailand. You know, Thailand. You know, we are so attractive. We are so we are we are we are the place where people just said, "I want to come." I want this not only because it's you know, it's a beautiful country. It's not because the food is just, it's outrageous. Not because the, of the location, but something else also. The the skillful people who work in this industry, the Thai people who've been working in international production since the, the killing field. Yes. You know, that was a film I saw when I was in the States, you know, uh, I, I was an art student, you know, and I, I didn't even know it was shot in Thailand until late. That, that was about to be my, my question. Did you know at that time that it was a film that has been shot in Thailand? Um, not really, you know, because I wasn't really into film at that time either. I knew that, no, Man with the Golden Gun was, you know, James like Bond. That. Yeah, James Bond. And then when I'm in the in this industry, I found out that they come to Thailand, you know, they not 
like I said, I guess when they're in the state or talking, heavy meeting somewhere in Hollywood, and if the producer said, we're going to Thailand, you can hear all the teams say, yes, you know, oh yeah, we can go and to Khao San Road and JJ Market and, you know, Phuket or whatever. But it's not only that. I think they come here and they found out that the people who work in the industry, the team, the lighting team, the sound, the set people, the the art people, you know, the you know, script advisor, they're all ready to provide service at their best quality. So they sometimes they only bring cameraman and maybe, you know, the director and the writer and the actors. And the rest you can find it here and we can produce uh, the same or equal quality as, you know, the film that you can produce anywhere else in the world. So I have another quote uh, to offer you. This one is from... Uh One of your colleagues, Jeremy Irons, a famous actor who probably said, I said always probably because it's coming from internet. So we, we never know, you know, it can be from uh, chat GPT somewhere. <laughs> Jeremy Irons was um, credited with this quote. He says, good acting is like good love making. Leave yourself alone and explore. So uh, <laughs> are you a good love maker on set? That's why I compare to cooking and then love making because I think it's the same thing. You have to have pa uh, passion, you have to have skill, <laughs> so you you have to keep practicing and and you know you have to check you know what you did is is was it good enough you know so the same thing you know when I cook I mean like when you perform and then the director would come to you and said hey. I like that scene, but can you make it, you know... From on set, I'm not, you're not talking about cooking or anything I'll else. try to change the subject right now. <laughs> before, I think before uh, our talk finish, I also want to give you my quote. And uh, how's that sound? You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tero Documentary, with your host, Stefan Lombert. We are back and still with Kun Pu, also known as Vitaya Pansinyam. Am I pronouncing correctly? Perfect. A prolific actor, ballet producer, kendo master, a great cook, and a fantastic singer. So since we cannot cook in the studio, let's sing a song. <laughs> my My lưu, my lươn, mượn đơn khu phá My lưu, rốt rắc, thì khơi phạc phẳng My lưu, khoam lặng, thì khơi phàn mà Chuộp chôn vê la, phí có my lưu Except I forgot the relics <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I believe it's called never forget <laughs> Never forget <laughs> So it's on Only God Forgives. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a song in Only God Forgives. Yeah. You know, um, interesting enough, when I thought back of, you know, many projects that I did, uh, one was The Last Executioner with Tom Waller. Um, in that film, uh, the character of Mr. Chawaret, who I, I play, um, he's, he used to be a rock and roll singer. So... Uh, I think Tom found a song that he doesn't have to buy. It was like one of those, <laughs> like a free song that you can sing and you don't have to pay the right for it. But it's, you know, I I performed that uh, in the movie. and The then, last execution. The last execution. And then when, uh, with uh, only, only God Forgives, you know, I remember also growing up, I always loved singing. You know, at that time there was no karaoke. I always, you know, play guitar with friends. We we have a little you know a folk song group uh, you know uh, a, a band you know group and all my bad habit that I did when I was young I can use it when I oh, came and directed. Can you separate your when you're on set when you are so much involved in your character that you create this imaginary world around you and mm -hmm. you you dive into to to mm -hmm. create to craft your character. Mm -hmm. Um, and your char the characters you've been playing are sometimes very dark. Mm. I mean, you are you are a killer. Uh, I mean, a legal killer mm. on, in uh, the last day of the executioner. You are killing cat. You are, <laughs> you know, just slicing people in small mm. dice in uh, in Paul Spurious film uh, Virginia. You are, mm. uh, how do you bring this back home? Or or once you are... I I stop somewhere before I get home. I make sure I go to to eat sushi. 
to go to a, a, a Japanese restaurant with a, a mug of cold beer and then, you know, let the the whatever just happened, you know, go. Or, or I I tell the production van to drop me off at a department store. I have to be, it has to be something in between, you know, or I listen to a classical music or I just, you know, uh, watch a YouTube video or something that, you know, bring you back or, or read, uh, you know, uh, news or something that it, it's almost like, okay, it's done. You know, now you have to kind of uh, change your your mood, you know, for uh, like, it, it, like it can be really scary because when I practice or I rehearse sometime, my wife said, I'm sorry, I cannot stay in your room with you, you know, I, you know, because it's, it's so intense. But like I said, I, I, it, you have to have a bit of a control. Actually, because you're in control, you can do what you're doing, you know. So that's, that's uh, I think I use that as a technique, you know, when you believe it so much, but at the same time, yeah, you visualize it, you, you know. The method is good to have method, but at the same time, you know, you should not have the method control you. What was your, your worst experience on set ever? Ever? You see how hard it is for me to come up with worst, worst experience? You know why? Because it almost, I don't want to be like, you know, Mr. Good Attitude, right? But you think about this. I, I never act until 50. I I was uh, you know running my business for twenty some years, uh, but that was a lot of hard work already to build something for two decades, right? I practiced kendo for thirty five years before I hard practice, you know. And when I got a new opportunity to be an actor, to be in front of the camera, in front of the director, in front of the whole production team, and I feel like. Keep me here forever. I love this every moment about being on set. No matter how hard it is, do it 15 takes, 20 takes, I don't care. A lot of people are fighting to be in front of the set for. They shouldn't be complaining about being on set. When I was working for Nicholas Ming Refn in Only God Forgives, he always said, cut, it's perfect, let's do it again. <laughs> And we do it 30 takes. And many people said, how many days is he going to keep going? He can go for 50. You know, because of that, I said to myself, why would he want to do 50 takes? Because he wants the best take. Sure, he has an idea that just pure And your job is to give him the best take. It could be the first two takes, but, you know, the rest is, 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 call, is calling, you know, for the, for the luck, you know, so for good luck. But for me... If you ask me the worst experience, I, I have to tell you, honestly, I never have bad experience. This is a question I asked uh, Tom Waller when he was with us uh, in another episode. Um, the last executioner, talk, I mean, deals with spirits. Uh, some people would say ghost. And this is a very sensitive topic in, in, in Thailand, in the situation. If, if you want someone to leave your house, you say, well, I have, I've seen a ghost and no one comes to see you anymore. Mm -hmm. So well, was it difficult to be on set Surrounded, I mean, within the stories that, that bring in spirits, ghosts, and what is the feeling? Of I don't know about, you know, Tom Wallace movie, you know, it's always about, you know, murder, about execution, about ghosts. Even when uh, we were shooting um, Mindfulness and Murder, we were, we were shooting uh, on the, how do you call, um, you know, the the place where they burn the body. and so Because at that time you were act you were portraying a uh, head monk? Head monk who uh, was <laughs> investigating the murder. And, used to the yeah. Yeah. and yeah. It keeps different energy. I think it's, it's good that you, you feel that, you know, you're involved with this project that has to do 